Hi everyone, I'm Dave Baxter of Image Matters Photography and this is another tutorial that explores all you need to know about each and every tool available to you in Lightroom's Develop module. Today we'll be talking about the much underestimated spot removal tool. I'll start with a very simple example of doing what it was originally designed to do, that's getting rid of dust specks in photos that were caused by dirt on the lens or on your camera's sensor. Next I'll move on to tackle how to remove larger unwanted elements of your photo and how to take control of the source and target areas to achieve more accurate and convincing results. I'll also discuss the difference between the clone and heal options and you'll see in the examples that this simple tool is not as limited as some people think. So let's start from the beginning with a simple spot removal example. Here's an example of an image that's actually littered with dust spots. It may not be obvious at first sight, but once you look closely, you can see that there is a repeating pattern of dust spots. And the reason for this is that this is a panorama and the same dust spot has been contributing to this picture multiple times. Now, the best way to go and see these, of course, just as when you're looking at noise or sharpness in an image, you have to go and look at pixel for pixel. So we need to zoom in on this. It might look big on screen, but we've got to go in really one to one to see the details. And so I'm going to go up in the top left hand corner here to the navigator area. And instead of fit, I'm just going to select one to one. And immediately we see a couple of dust spots. Uh, the area that we're seeing in the main part of the screen is shown up here on the top left with a little rectangle. And I can grab that with the cursor and move it around. And as I do so, I can see these dust spots moving around in the main bit of the screen. And I can scan across and sooner or later I'll see another one and another and another and so on. Now we need to be able to make sure that we catch them all. It's no good doing it this rather sort of haphazard way and there is a little bit of a trick to this. If I put this up in the top left hand corner again we can immediately see we've got two more but we want to actually scan our picture in a fairly logical way so that we don't miss anything. And there's a little trick here that I want to show you and that's using the page up and page down keys. Now if you've got a PC you'll have a keyboard with page up and page down keys usually somewhere off to the right hand side. If like me you've got a Mac and you've it's got a tiny keyboard. It doesn't have page up, page down keys. It does have just left, right and up and down keys and that's it. But if you hold down the function key and use the up and down arrow keys, you can um, actually make it behave like a page up, page down. The reason I say this is because the page up and page down keys are very handy here because they make the navigator window move in discrete steps in such a way that it scans the whole image. Let me just demonstrate. At the moment, we're in the top left hand corner. If I hold down my function key and now press my down arrow key at the same time, you can see that it moves down exactly the right amount and steps down another one and another one and it'll keep doing this until it gets to the bottom and then it'll move off to the top of the next column and each time I press it it goes through again and we're seeing the whole picture but it's being examined now in exactly rectangular chunks of the right size so as I go through here I can say look there's one there's one there's one and by the time I've finished, I know that I haven't missed anything. There we are. Of course, I've done nothing to remove the spots yet, so we actually have to go into the develop tool to do that. Right, here we are in the develop module. I've already zoomed in one to one. And you can see from the navigator panel in the top right hand corner that we're looking at the very top right hand corner of the image. It's shown full size, one to one pixels, 100% view in the main part of the screen. And we can see immediately that we've got a huge great blob here, which is a dust spot on the sensor. So to get rid of this, you just hit the Q key, which is the quickest way of doing it. And that will open a panel on the top right hand corner, which uh, is also opened by this icon here. And this has a size, feather and opacity control. Mostly though you'll be using shortcut keys so just quickly review this. You normally want the cursor to be just a little bit bigger than the spot like it is here. But if I hit the left and right square bracket keys which are here on my keyboard I can just press and hold them and this will adjust the size of the cursor. 
there's an inner solid cursor and an outer dotted one which is probably quite difficult to see on this screen at the moment. The difference between the inner and outer one is the feather area and that will become apparent later on when you see the difference. It doesn't make a lot of difference for sky spots like this because there's not much to feather against. Okay all I need to do now is just click the cursor. As soon as I do Lightroom hunts around for a similar area that it can patch over the offending dust spot. Usually Lightroom will pick a very sensible area to paste over your dust spot but if it gets it wrong you have a number of options. You can hit the forward slash key like this and that will make it choose another area. I can hit it again and again and again and each time it will try and find somewhere else if the first attempt wasn't good enough. Alternatively you can just click and drag these so my sample point now can be somewhere different. In fact if I move it to the very corner where there's a strong blue here you can see that's a really bad choice. And what it's done here if you look in the top right hand corner you can see we've got two options clone and heal. At the moment I've got clone switched on which means that when I come back onto the screen here the pixels from this area from the source area are being put directly over the top of the target area which is where my spot is and as you can see it's a very different shade of blue. Now I could feather that a bit if I change the feather on here you'll see that it sort of helps a little bit because I can feather this in and sort of blend it in to give it a feathered edge. Let's put that back again to zero so you can see it there. I could also change the opacity and then you start to see the spot coming through again. Now normally you would think well why would you want anything other than 100% opacity? It actually turns out to be quite useful for cosmetic um, touch-up jobs but we'll come on to that later. For the moment we'll keep the opacity at 100 and uh, I'll leave the feather at zero at the moment just to demonstrate what heal does instead. The idea of heal is that it takes the pixels from your source area and it blends them in to those in the target area and it usually does a very good job. Even with this kind of discrepancy here in colour I can click on heal and it still manages to blend that in. It still made it go away perfectly. That's the power of the heel. Sometimes you do want clone. You actually do want to be able to paste something identical over an area and we'll come to that later as well. But for the moment, usually for this kind of thing, heel is the best thing. Now let's go right back and turn this off again. I'll just go back in my history a moment. Back to here where we first had this. Well, there. There we go. Now, with this dust spot, it's quite obvious that it's a dust spot. We can see it stands out like a sore thumb. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you can miss something, and it's quite handy sometimes to have a little visual reminder. And Lightroom provides this in the guise of something called Visualize Spots. And if I click this particular tick box here, it turns my image into... Uh, a differentiation so that it's showing edges. This is an edge detection algorithm and I can control the strength of that with this slider here. And if I get it just right, this if I put it right to the far end it's a bit noisy and messy, fussy looking, but if I back this off a bit I can get it so that the noise in the sky isn't showing so much and my spots very very obviously are showing up. Now this doesn't affect the picture in any way, this is just a, a means of viewing it. So it doesn't matter what you set this to really, it's just up to you. So with it in this particular mode, we can now just go ahead and get rid of our dust spots as usual. Let's got that one. Let's page down and see what else we can find. Now, there's the outline of our buildings, there's no obvious spots on there. Oh, there's one. Let's get rid of that while we're here. It's probably the same dust spot. You get the general idea. There's no need to watch me doing all the dust spots in real time, so let's just speed things up.
Right, I'm now going to go back to fit view and I'm going to turn off visualize spots now. You, you can see now when I hover my cursor over there, there's all the spots that we detected and you can see that flowing pattern as they've repeated across the image as a result of um, stitching several images together. But now we know that there are no more spots. So, um, they've all been dealt with and if I turn that off you've got a nice clear sky now. To finish all I have to do now is either go up to the spot removal tool icon and press it again or I just press done down here and my panel closes and I'm ready to now try my next example. Here's an example that uh, stretches things a little bit more. This is a picture of the partial eclipse of the Sun taken in March 2015. It was taken with a zoom lens, a times 2 converter and a piece of fluff. In previous versions of Lightroom it was only possible to remove a spot with a spot removal tool. You couldn't do anything else so if you had a large piece of fluff you just had to hope that your brush was big enough to encompass it. Now in our case it is but we've maxed out our brush to 100 here and so that's as big as we can go. Now it so happens that I could just click this and get rid of that piece of dust quite easily. Here's an example of where Lightroom gets it completely wrong. So let's just try hitting the forward slash key. Oh, that's better. OK, so that's fixed it. But what would happen if that piece of fluff was much bigger than the brush? We already have a brush as big as we can make it. So the other way of using this, let me just go back and take out the spot removal thing. And we'll go back to here and we'll choose a smaller brush. Let's use the left bracket key and we'll make this smaller and this time I'm just going to click and drag on the dust spot and when I release it Lightroom will find some nearby piece of exactly the same shape and paste it over it so that's it job done let's just uh, hit the H key to hide the cursors and you can see it's a very convincing job. Right, let's try something more challenging now. OK, what do we make of this? It looks like just an ordinary building and maybe we wanted to take out some dust spots from the sky or something behind it. Or maybe there were one or two imperfections somewhere on the brickwork or maybe there was a piece of dust in the picture. Well, let me show you what this looked like before we started. I thought this would be a very good example to show how Lightroom's spot removal tool isn't limited just to dust spots and bits of fluff. Let's go in one to one. And now let's um, pick a dove, any dove. Um, let's go in and find one. What size brush have we got at the moment? We can make this bigger. Let's go for this guy here. No, this one, because he's giving us a funny look. Now I'll just increase the size of the brush. I'll just make it big enough to get him but not so big that it's going to sample over one of the others so this is the bit we want to get rid of so let's see what happens because the roof tiles are so irregular this has done quite a good job you wouldn't really notice I could feather excuse the pun I could feather these in a little bit there we go but if it wasn't quite right, I could move it. Let's go and find another one. Let's try this one here. The tiles in the background, where it's, it's sampling here from further up the picture, where the tiles are actually smaller than they are in the foreground due to perspective. So it would actually be better if we sampled from the horizontal rather than the vertical. So I'm just going to grab this sample point and move it around to the left. And it's also um, it's giving me a strange bit of colour here, so I'm going to clone these in. There we go. So cloning is a much better option at this time because it's not trying to mess around with the texture and blend it in from somewhere else. This is giving me a nice repeating pattern which I can just very accurately adjust until it looks right. Let's try another one. 
this sample point is obviously wrong it's gone down to the brickwork so once again I'll just swing it up horizontally until I've lined up the horizontal bits in these slates and they're done nice and easy let's um, hit the H key and zoom out again and you can see that I've got rid of three doves already this low resolution image was sent into Lightroom Lab Facebook group by Ben one of our members it has a few dust spots but the main problem is the distracting street lights here here and here Ben said he'd tried without success to get rid of the street lights using the spot removal tool so I asked him if I could use this as an example image to demonstrate that Lightroom spot removal tool could in fact make a half decent job of it. Right let's do this the simple way first of all and see how far we can get with that approach. Just here we have a bit of street lamp sticking out. I've adjusted my brush so that it just covers a bit of the street lamp here. So if I now just click this you can see that obviously I've got something which is sampled from the wrong place but because we have a repeated pattern the idea here is to grab the sample point and move it to another part of the image where we've got very similar curves so if I just move this I can match it fairly well let's just hit the H key and see what that looks like well that's made a fairly good job of the sky here but if you notice carefully there's a dark blob here on this column because it was sampled from the column next to it where the shadow was slightly darker so I'm not 100% happy with that so what I'll do is show the tool overlay here so we can see what we're dealing with I'll set this to always there is our spot and I'm just going to select that and then hit the backspace key and that will get rid of it so let's try a different approach this time I'm going to zoom right in I'm going to go in at times four so I'll just click up here and navigate across to the same point again this time I'm not going to try and get rid of it in one click I'm going to use the technique where I click and drag so I'm going to hold the cursor here and just drag it carefully down matching the curve so I'm going and then across so that I've got the whole thing covered and now if I hit H that's done it that's a fair job there so I'm happy with that one and I haven't got a blob here that I've just been copied across from the other column so let's now move on and try that in the next column click drag I'm going to try and go up the other side as well here just it's probably a bit easier sometimes if you have a graphics tablet I'm doing this with a mouse at the moment even though I do have a graphics tablet alright let's see what that okay that's pretty much done that as well there's a little bit of a area here that looks like it could be improved I'll just go back to that tool overlay it keeps changing back to never I'll stick it on always All right yes yeah, so I actually want to extend this patch area very slightly down and to do that I just hold down the shift key and as I move my cursor which is currently a hand as I move it just over the edge of this patch area it will turn back into a brush tool and if I then click just click not drag it will extend the size of my area now let's hit the H key that's much better you get the idea anyway if I go back in one to one now we can see that's made a pretty good attempt at that um, whilst I'm looking at it this size I notice there's a, a line here across there let's just quickly grab that and get rid of that because that's a very trivial thing to do now we've got one bit left here and that's down in this section um, there's a bit of a lamp post and it looks like there's a colored blob here which is possibly a person so what would be nice to do would be to copy the C across into that area and um, hopefully 
get rid of it all in one go. Let's see what we can do with that. OK, once again, I'm going to go in at four to one. Hold down the space bar and navigate to the offending area so it's nice and big. Right now, let's just paint over this bit. That's nearly done it. There's a little bit of a mess just here. So I'm going to extend this again and using the technique I've just shown you. Hold down the shift key. I'm going to make the size of the brush a bit smaller. So hold down the shift key, wait until it just moves over the edge of the patch area and then click. Now let's hit the H key I could do with a bit more there. So I'm going to have another go just about here. Get rid of that. Now, H key again. Yep, that will do. Now we've still got this area here, so I'm going to do that separately. So I'm going to take this down here, up the other side, and I'm going to copy it across from a piece of C a bit further to the left. Let's see if that works. So carefully position this and drag down. Change that back to always. And now we can see where that's copied it from, which is obviously the wrong place, but we'll soon fix that. So I'm just going to drag this up until the C levels match, which is about there. Now let's view that one to one. Hit the H key. And I think that's a reasonable attempt at fixing this. Let's go fit. I now hit the backslash key, you'll see the before and after. That was before, and there's after. So I hope you'll agree that the spot removal tool is actually more capable than you perhaps think. Earlier on I did say I'd show you when to use the opacity slider, and here's a very good example. Here I just want to get rid of some bags under the eyes, and it's a very common thing to do when you're doing touch-up work. And in Lightroom you can do this quite easily with the spot removal tool. So I'll just click and drag. And you can see the result is quite horrible. If I, You can see that it's actually trying to get the skin tones and stuff from the other side of the face. So let's just click and drag that so that it's somewhere nearby. These cheeks, for example. Now you can still see that it's completely horrible. If I take the H key, that's done a dreadful job of it. And the reason is because it's still set to clone. So with that active, if I go up here and instead of clone, like we were using in the last example, I switch to heal, you'll find that that makes a lovely job of it. Now, it's all blended in, but it looks unnatural because people don't have absolutely no eye bags at all, very often. I mean, you might, if you were Japanese or something, maybe, but in this case, it doesn't look right. So what we need to do is to back the opacity off a bit. And if I take the opacity control and back it off, you'll see that the, the folds of the skin begin to get slightly more visible. So you can, if I take this right back, you can just adjust this as much as you like. Generally, you don't want to completely eradicate skin blemishes. You want to just back them off a bit. So I will just increase the opacity a little in small steps here. And that's it, job done. If you found this tutorial useful, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're on Facebook, 
We'd love to see you on the Lightroom Lab group, where we'd be happy to answer your questions and take suggestions for further video tutorials. Thank you for watching.